Hello, everybody. We are live. It is July 16th at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have, uh, let's see here, one, two, about three weeks, or excuse me, like two weeks and two days until we announce our draw or our winner and make a drawing from our. Um, we have over 20,000 people who have entered our contest, and more than 2,000 of them have earned over um, like 1,000 entries. So they've come back more than just one day. And that's what I want to see. That was the whole purpose of these contests was to spark action, whether that was educating yourself, whether that was being more diligent in your workouts or staying consistent with your workouts. I just wanted to try to incentivize the process and it, it worked. It showed that it did work, uh, but we can't do it by losing our shirt. So we've, um, we have a new system coming with an app to deliver all of our programming and coaching, get access to our via the app. So stay tuned. We'll be announcing that pretty soon. We just had Eric hop on. What's going on, Eric? What's up, man? Where are you at? We're at the girlfriend's. Okay. Getting okay. ready to move, so everything. I thought you were maybe up. in a different state. I thought maybe you're in Miami or at a Sorenex conference. <laughs> I wish, man. Um, <laughs> so, um, just I was just doing a little few announcements, and here's the link to the full contest page. As always, we'll be announcing promo codes with each promo code worth a hundred entries. Currently, the top. Um, the most amount of entries earned has been about 19,000 entries. And the person below them, I think, is at about, um, let me just, not this quote. Yeah, the person below them is 18,000, 17,000. And then it hovers, um, then the next highest is like 10, 11, 12,000. So it's been really cool to see all the dedication people have towards working towards this, this grand prize. Um, so getting right into it, today I wanted to talk about more than just a look, that's what I titled it, and talking about um, kind of the fickleness that comes with our goal selection, talk about the difference between product versus process goals, and talk about consistency and the purpose for uh, embedding fitness and taking care of one's mind and body um, for overall health and well-being. So I think the first thing that I wanted to, that came to mind when I was thinking about this was the, the side of people that really truly stick to um, their endeavors and the side that I see yo-yo all the time and they get in their own way in terms of they, they have an end goal in mind, but they're running around almost like a chicken with their head cut off and they're just trying to make everything balance until they can't. And then they find themselves having habits and behaviors that are actually deterring them from their goal. So it's like every day they're working towards and also working back. And, you know, it, life should be lived in flow states. Um, we've talked about this in different formats on our podcast in terms of um, performance and getting rid of that 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 doubt or that ongoing um, process in the back of our heads that disallows us from just being able to be present in the in the moment or in the activity that we're doing. Uh, you know, you can think of you know a great example of flow state is Tony Hawk will talk about it how he had to. Um, kind of repetitively tell himself that he was going to able to complete the 900 and that he can do it because all these doubts were rushing in very real doubts. Um, but his ability to kind of fend off those doubts and the, the self deprecating thoughts and allow him to stay focused and honed in, allowed him to hit that 900 to make, um, make a, a uh, you know, a world record. So, when we think of the first step into the gym, it's okay that it starts with like, I just want to look better. I want to feel better. Um, it's bad when it's so 
monotheologic, like anything in life. You know, it's 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 always a blend of different concepts. So if it's if it's single layered, if it's like I just want to look good, I just want to look good, I just want to look good. The reason that's going to lead you to roadblocks or to stopping and starting all the time is because you're going to get have periods where you look in the mirror and you look fine, because you probably already look fine already. Um, but you're you're trying to stimulate change out of just solely guilt or shame or fear. They might not even solely be what you believe. It might be you viewing yourself through the eyes of other people around you and you're projecting your insecurities onto yourself. So, you know, what happens is people look at themselves, you know, in the mirror, they step on the scale every day and two things can happen. You can either notice no change and it can pop your balloon of momentum and um, consistency and you, you lose the will to want to try to work hard for something. Um, and the second thing that hap can happen is you look fine, so you don't even give a crap to go work out or to make good, healthy choices. And that's why it's more than just a look. Um, you know, a lot of times what happens when we just focus on the product goal, just the end goal, like, this, I just want to look like this, just want to look like this. We're willing to take shortcuts to get there because we lose sight of why we want to look that way or why we want to have confidence when we take our shirt off. Um, and what can happen is we can adapt some bad patterns, whether that's steroids, whether that's expensive supplements that allow us to get away with doing less work for the um, ability to look decent in the short term, but cause long-term damage. An example of that would be um, Ozempic. There is absolutely short-term wins that people can gain, that gain that confidence for how they look. But in the long term, it's actually not the best thing for your health. And actually, they've shown that you're, you're losing more muscle than you are fat. So you're not even really you know, solving the health side. You're solving the, the way that you look at yourself side. Um, you know, this kind of stems back to when I was coming up in this, in this industry and you'd see people on health and fitness magazines just voided out of their minds with extreme vascularity all over their, all over their body. And they have like paper thin skin. And in reality, they probably have a terrible liver. They probably have, um, uh, you know, overstress their heart and their ventricles in their heart. Their, their balls are probably shrunken up. Um, there's a lot of problems with their health that we're not seeing because all we're seeing is that superficial image. And it's that archetype that we compare ourselves to because we think we need to look this certain way in order to maybe attract a mate or to feel good about ourselves or to feel masculine um, or to feel feminine, whatever it may be. Um, but again, it's, it's creating that self-image and that desire based on other people's perspectives. And you have to be able to dig within and figure out why, why you want to look a certain way, why you want to improve your position. And then that allows you to invest yourself in the process. And you no longer are oriented by yourself by other people's opinions. You know, I've, I've sat down and worked with, um, with, with highly motivated people, but they couldn't get out of this concept of only wanting to look good because of other people's approval. Well, that's the, the, one of the most fickle things, other people's approval. I'll tell you, you know, being online for nine months, almost a year now, um, you know, the, the quote unquote, the masses out there can, can love you or hate you very rapidly. And if you, if you circumvent your self image based on other people's perspective, then you're always going to be on this emotional roller coaster. And, and it is, um, it is not a fun thing. It's not consistent and it doesn't allow you to stay in the process of taking care of yourself, making sure you're sleeping well, picking the right things at the grocery store, preparing more of your own food, uh, staying active versus just being a couch potato and ordering pizza and cookies and, and, and fast food all the time. And, you know, it, it just, it, it's fascinating sometimes how people can have this mindset of, I just want to do X. I just want to have this six pack for this beach vacation. I just want to fit in this dress for this one event. And then along the journey behind closed doors, 
they fall back into these patterns that feel good at the time, but are 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 totally contradictory of their end goals. And it, it just comes back to feel good um, and pleasure seeking. And that's not even true freedom. You know, we think true freedom is just doing what we want whenever we want. And in reality, true freedom is when you can um, eliminate all those desires and get true peace and happiness just here in this moment right now. And you can eliminate like time, th this constraint of time kind of goes away because you're not thinking about it. So you're not operating through, for, through fear or sadness or guilt. You're operating through joy and delight. And you're not you're not, um, you're not pleasure seeking all the time with, oh, I just want to get this pump and take a picture in the mirror, this perfect angle and post this to social media so that everybody sees how great I am. Oh, and then I just want to stuff my face with pizza and, and cookies and, and sit on the couch because that feels good. Like that's not freedom. You might think that in the short term because, oh, I can finally do what I want with my time, but you're still on this roller coaster of, um, of desires and you're being controlled by your superficial desires without being connected to the long term. Um, you know, the classic line is there's no greater weapon than the human soul on fire. And I think that's what we as coaches can um, impart on our clients. That's what we see in, in the greatest, right? Like, like the Tony Hawks, the Arnold Schwarzeneggers, um, the Jalen Hurts, um, the Sh Shikari Richardsons, these people are so focused and invested on the process that, and the, the David Goggins, that they just invest themselves on the process. They don't care about the results because they know the more that they focus on the process and less about that results, the more that the results are going to come. That, that um, physique um, is like the trophy at the end of the road by focusing on the processes of sleeping well, eating well, being consistent in your physical activity, being consistent in your choices for um, longevity and performance and not necessarily trying to rob Paul to pay Peter and just look at something that's going to be short-lived in the short-term goals. So, um, you know, with that being said, it's a good time to pause and I'll release our first promo code unwind daily u-n-w-i-n-d d-a-i-l-y one and you can go to the link um in the chat there to redeem your first promo code we have four left i'm just going to take a short break here catch my breath anything you want to add into what i just said yeah it, it, it can be both ways too because i think having short-term goals of wanting to look good are actually beneficial but you have to have a process to get there and i think that's like you said where people get struck because if you you go back and watch like pumping iron arnold's like well i wanted bigger biceps so he said what did he do he went in the gym and did more biceps and i think that's a great way for people to really feel feel good i mean that, for me there's nothing better than a pump sometimes right but that compiled with everything else. I can't just go in and do two days of biceps and expect to have 22 inch biceps. That process that's underlying has to be there. So having short term goals is okay. Only if you have a long term program or plan underneath that to allow that to happen. Because like you said, we see people with these short term goals and a lot of it happens around summertime. People want to get in shape for summer. And then what happens? August comes or July 4th comes and they go right back to their poor patterns because they're drinking, they're not working out, they're not doing anything. And then as, as we know, fall comes, the holiday comes and it's increased the weight gain. Research has shown that that's when a lot of people gain most of their weight and it's cyclical. So to have that plan of like, yeah, you can have short term. I want to look like this. I want to be that, but it's not going to happen unless you have that long-term plan. And I think, it's okay to – this is hard because you want to feel good, right? Everyone wants that, like, good sensation feeling, dopamine's release, but that's not going to be the case all the time. But that's where people make these poor decisions of eating bad or I want to have something with sugar in it. I want to feel good. It doesn't. A lot of times you and I both know, like, our workouts 
at times are going to be hard, but they're, we always throw some stuff at the end, like biceps and triceps, because we like that. And it's the same thing with our clients. If they want to get a certain goal or they want to have a certain aspect, 100% I'll let them have that. But I don't make that the primary focus of a training session or a training plan. And I think people kind of need to understand that. But it, it is yeah, an interesting right. topic because people really do from a, a biological and social standpoint, look at themselves. And we have this kind of conscious archetype of what it's going to look like for optimal human performance or optimal humans looks. And I think they just did this in AI like a month ago that they had an AI come up with like the optimal looking female and optimal looking male. And it's very much your, your average in shape human being, because that also put goes along the line with biology saying, Hey, this person is the most fertile optimal mating and is going to survive longer than others. And I think that's what socially a lot of people look at. Like they want to look like that. They want to look in shape. And we both know that some of these magazines, these people are on super cuts. Like that's, that doesn't happen 24 seven, but it is, 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 it is a drive that people have that they want to look at. And I think that's fine to have. I think that's a great goal to have, but have that plan underneath. And a lot of our clients, that's where they come to us for help is like, Hey, I want to look like this. We get them on a plan they do start to look like that, but then they understand everything else. Like you said, the sleep, the nutrition, it all plays a role in it. And it's just not this, Hey, we're going to get you in shape in 21 day workout. Like that doesn't exist. And I do just want to um, emphasize what Eric just emphasized too. It's not, it's not a problem unless it's the only focus. Mm -hmm. That's what I said in the beginning too, is that monotheologic side of things. If it's your only focus, you'll see so many people make sacrifices that allow them to just look good in the short term. And it's like Icarus flying too close to the sun. They don't realize that they are actually going to be making damage now to their body and their health. So it's like they've lost sight of the reason they got into a routine in the first place because they were solely focused on one layer of their of their outcome so just to emphasize it and to reiterate what eric said mm -hmm. having that long term with the short term is the way that you do it and it's totally fine to have a short-term goal of wanting to look better but you need to attach it to a longer term purpose and have it kind of rooted in a, a deeper meaning of why you're trying to necessarily look good you know it is also a great indicator of or it's, it's it's a great um it's a great first indicator of um your perspective on yourself and your habits uh you know there i don't i'm not trying to body shame anybody here but there is absolutely a level to which uh if someone's extremely fat and out of shape um noticing that can be easier on someone who has been act, active for five days a week and um, eating all whole foods and staying in a, in a caloric range that's healthy um, for their body type. And now here's the thing, though. I'm not trying to say that this person, uh, the overweight person, necessarily um, needs to assimilate themselves to everyone else's goal of, of having to look a certain way. But they should absolutely be aware of some of the unhealthy patterns that they're adopting and how to change some of those things so that they can uh, feel good about themselves. And I think that's where um, I really want to take more of today's discussion. Um, you know, we we can easily be sidetracked by wanting to just feel good or think about ourselves in a really positive light. And I'm all for body positivity, but I'm not about um, covering up a bigger issue. I, you know, there is absolutely a, a side of it that's unhealthy. You know, it's like if you took an alcoholic and you said, oh, no, everything's fine. Like, just keep doing you. You're great. Everyone loves you. And you weren't open and, and honest about your concerns with their behavior. You know, I remember um, this was back in – ninth grade or eighth grade before high school and we watched this class and I watched this video in Spanish class and it was just of this village and how they were talking to each other and one lady walked up to another lady and just says hey like you look like you've gained a lot of weight are you okay are you stressed like what's what's going on and it was a it was from a concern you know we we have very um we're very 
sensitive in our country and our culture and we can't talk about these things everything it has to be like a sometimes a toxic positivity and if you've seen ted lasso you know what i mean in that realm of um, being unable to have some of these tougher conversations whether it's with your children or your spouse or yourself and it's okay to look at things in a different light and and not get so triggered and defensive um because you think someone is 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 shaming you into something you know sometimes it is coming from a, a care or a, or a place of love and and absolutely you know piggyback on what eric was was bringing up it's okay to have that as your first layer of i want to look better i want to feel better um with my shirt off i want to feel better uh naked with my spouse in the bedroom these can be where these places start. The problem is when the, it's the sole reason you're trying to commit to change, because then you start taking shortcuts. Again, you start taking supplements or doing or, or doing surgeries or doing things that focus on just the end product and not the process. And the reason, again, I'm bringing this up as a problem is because then I see people who get to their product goal very rapidly and they didn't have that delayed gratification they didn't invest themselves into a process or into real sustainable changes in their life so ultimately their product is a short-lived result and they kind of that ball rolls down the hill and they end up back where they where they um, were you know it's also sad sometimes you know you can see in extreme cases um people make long-term damage from either steroids or some of these other supplements or surgeries. Um, yeah. You know, a, a good yeah, example. We, we both know those people. We both yeah. interact with people who, who decreased their health for short term goals. And now they, they didn't know at the time or they, maybe they did, but they didn't care. But now, now removed five years later when, you know, someone, you know, can't have kids or has, you know, health issues, it's a problem. So I think, it's very important, like you said, to have people understand that these shortcuts aren't viable because you're not creating healthy behavioral habits for the long term. And I think so many people um, end up doing that because they're so overwhelmed with the process that's in front of them. And you have to have um, you have to have two things. You know, you have to have a, a memory like a goldfish. You know, goldfish is, is so happy all the time because they have such a short memory. They're not thinking about um, all the things that have gone wrong that day or, or that they didn't do well. And I think we're so good at nailing our own, ourselves to the cross and we can be our own worst enemies again. Um, and then on the other side of it, you have to be kind of short-sighted in um, the headlight analogy. The headlight analogy is driving in heavy fog. You can't see five miles down the road, but you can see the first 50 feet in front of you and that's what you need to focus on. You know, we get so overwhelmed by the process because we start to wake up to kind of where we're at today. And then we, we want to create this vision of where we want to go. And we just we just want it because it's it's creating so much anxiety. We haven't dealt with that anxiety before. Um, but it's 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 that concept of fearlessness doesn't mean operating without any fear. It means operating in spite of having fear. So in spite of having that anxiety of, oh my gosh, there's things that I need to change. Um, you just, again, focus on the little things you can control. And I think the serenity prayer really comes into play here. It doesn't matter your your religion or if you're not religious at all. The serenity prayer is beautiful because it's, it's grant me the courage to change the things I can change, the strength to endure the things I cannot change, and the wisdom to learn the difference. Um, just having that kind of three categories to catalog your thoughts or your situation can be very helpful. And then along with this is with each day we gain knowledge, we gain perspectives and they change our paradigms. And what happens is we look back on our old self with our new futuristic perspective and we judge ourselves, which is not fair. How, how can I fairly judge who I was yesterday with the eyes of today? If the eyes of today are constantly growing and expanding and evolving because I'm in this growth lifestyle, it's not fair for me to look back and judge. It's okay for me to look back and learn, 
But then I then I have to go back to the helm. I have to go back to the front of the ship and steer again. I look at my wake. I learn. I go back and steer. And I think too often do we get stuck in the judgment side. It builds. Um, it creates this analysis or paralysis by analysis concept and then we're just so focused on wanting to get this hurt off of our shoulders from this pain of of anxiety and fear and guilt and shame so we just want that end product we just want the end product because we want that that shame and guilt and fear to go away when in reality that shame and guilt and fear is like the compost and we need to churn that accordingly so it can grow this beautiful garden of our life that we're looking to change or and people really quick, people before, like judge oh. Chico, let me just announce Another promo code. It is snatched. S N A T C H E D. That is the second promo code. Again, worth a hundred entries. Go ahead and use that in the contest link. We have three left today. Big day for uh, for codes today. But I was gonna say, like it, I, the judgment thing, right? Because if you look at the definition of judgment, it's to come to a conclusion at the end. But do a lot of people don't come to a conclusion? They just judge and they just say, oh, that was bad. That was good. You know, this is wrong. And they don't ever have that learning thing to change. And well, Carl you know, Jung said, what we, res- what we resist persists. Mm-hmm. And we have all this great technology in the world, but we can't stop our own minds. That is something that is so individual based. Each person's like a little Rubik's cube, and they need to be willing to dive into these things. And I'm so proud of one of my clients. His, sure, one of his major, to Eric's point, one of his major driving factors was to look good. But he has reoccurring knee and lower back pain um, due to split discs, due to injuries when he was younger, um, different broken bones, and a lot of. Um, our, our initial time and our warm up is spent moving comfortably and getting out of pain. And I can't do all that for him. And he knows that. And so it takes that added benefit of self awareness in the habits and behaviors that he's participating in outside of the gym and the way he's moving and using his body outside of the gym. And it's this constant, um, you know, take a, take a step forward or take two steps forward and take a step back, two forward, step back, two forward, step back. And it, it is absolutely um, frustrating and annoying because people just want, I just want to feel good. I just want to be able to move. I just want to be able to look good. Come on. I just want to be able to get through my workout, but to be able to stick with the problem comes back to this concept that Albert Einstein introduced to us. Everyone around him would call him a genius, a genius, a genius. And he said, I'm not a genius, people. I'm not a genius. You can do what I'm doing. You just have to stick with the problem longer. And that's so profound because how often do we just want to be done with all our problems and be able to just sit there problemless and just do whatever we want? And again, you think that's freedom, but it's not. You're still succumbing to the outside influences of society, of um, your own self-deprecating thoughts. And when you can get to a point where you can eliminate all that judgment and you can come into yourself, um, you get to a point of what Deepak Chopra calls as um, effortless spontaneity or what um, some physical therapist called, called – um, unobstructed self-expression and and again i guess the bigger piece that i'm tying this back to how this plays a role is is in performance in sports in the gym i have to be able to execute especially when it comes to a barbell on the ground and i need to lift that thing and throw it overhead if i have any doubt or even if that bar hits some clothing on the way up All of that is hesitation. It's slowing myself down. It's impeding on my ability to perform. So when you can get to a point where you can live through your your source or your inner soul or or God, universe, world, spirit, whatever you want to say this is, um, you are going to unleash this ability to live through um, abundance and live so closely to what echoes 
through your, every cell in your body that it's going to be like full court press and you're going to be doing things solely for the enjoyment of them without worrying about anyone's opinions. Like Jalen Hurts has this great speech and you can look it up and he just talks about how um, I had a purpose long before anyone had an opinion. So it doesn't matter what the outside world says about him. It doesn't matter what um, – what the critics say about him because he had a purpose long before anyone had an opinion and he doesn't, he doesn't like looking at the results. Sure. He, lo- he loves looking up and seeing that they won the Super Bowl. He doesn't love looking up and seeing they lost the Super Bowl, but he's just that much more focused on the process. And what did he do in his off season after getting to the Super Bowl? He went and finished his degree. I think it was a master's degree. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But that's all he's focused on is back to the work, back to the grind, back to the books, back to the gym, back to the the kitchen, back to just focusing on all the processes that deliver the end product. And again, these aren't it's not like focusing on five different, you know, five million different things. What's he focused on? He's focused on the five things that he needs to do five million times, which is get to practice, get to the gym, sleep well, eat well, manage my stress levels, take care of the loved ones around me, take care of my teammates, you know, be a beacon of strength and hope and positivity for those around me. He focuses on those in a consistent manner and he's constantly watering those things so that they grow and get stronger and more solidify in his in his awareness, which just solidify themselves in his actions. So, you know, again, coming back full circle to the gym and how this all applies is is being focused on the process so when we lift again back to what we were saying earlier you can totally do this and start from a, um, an, an idea of wanting to look better but dive deeper why do you want to look better do you want to feel good about yourself do you want to feel good about yourself when you're with your spouse alone in the bedroom do you want to feel good about yourself when you're out and about and you have your shirt off do you want to be looked up to by your peers and your children and grandchildren as as someone of strength and and a leader then you want to lift for your abilities you lift for strength you lift for body composition changes you don't just lift for this end product um and, and again, coming back to uh, the serenity prayer, understand what you can change and what you can't change. Another promo code here as we get a sip of water is P-W-R-C-L-E-A-N. So it's power clean, but power is abbreviated. Again, P-W-R-C-L-E-A-N. We have two promo codes left. And with the... Like the Jalen Hurts thing is, is fast because he's – and even in college when he lost the national championship, they said he put the score of the game when he lost to Clemson on the background of his phone, and he had that as a motivation thing. So there there will be negative things that are going to happen along the road. And but use them as chips on your shoulder. To exactly. To drive you. And I think when it comes to like other people's opinions and what society thinks, that's never going to go away. And, yeah, you really don't need to care about it. But it's always going to be there. And that's something that I would always have struggles with when I was younger is how society perceives me. And that was what one thing that drove me into the gym. I knew I was very skinny. I knew like I needed to increase weight and muscle mass to perform at a sport. That was the avenue that I used. And if that's the case, use that as a drive and motivation. But it's to understand like the Jalen Hurst things. You have to understand of where you're going to be in the long term and not just something that's going to be short term or very quick fixes. Now, yes, it's going to be a lot of negative people will bully. There are bullies out there. People call you skinny. People call you overweight. That's not an excuse to create a, a movement to be like, oh, no, everyone's like everything's fine. There's nothing wrong with being overweight. You know, body positive. I think that's kind of um, the wrong way to look at it because inherently people know where they are. If you ask anyone, they know if they're overweight, they know if they're skinny, they all, I feel like a lot of people have an idea of what they want to look like. So to be able to take that and use that and put that into your effort is the driving goal. And I know you and I have talked about this of ourselves uh, way back when when we really got into it. That was one thing that kind of drove us to be who we are today. Not that it's a bad thing, but like, I just don't like when people use it almost as an excuse to be like, oh, well, I can't change myself or, you know, they get so negative 
buried because they go on social media. They see, you know, other people, they're reading comments. Like you can't dive into that cesspool because that's just going to keep bringing you down. You have to understand it and create that change for yourself. Let you get so mad that you're actually going to go out and change it. Because if you don't, if you let nobody random on the internet win, that nobody just influenced the somebody. And that nobody is probably sitting there in their couch, not doing anything. But if they influence your decisions, now you're letting other people dictate your actions. And with this world of social media and these fast paced internet, and this is just the little world we live in. That's becoming more prevalent that other people are making decisions for you. That's not the case. You make your own decisions. You go, where do you want to be starting tomorrow? And then you work towards your goal. There's going to be drastic changes. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy because you're going to have to cut things out of your life. You're going to have to cut people out of your life that you think may be providing short-term gratification. But in reality, we both know that it's impeding what your process is for ultimate health longevity. And do you remember even when we used to work in Boston, there was other trainers that were like that. You know, they'd go, out, oh, you want to go drinking? You want to go do this? And it would impede, you know, the ability to, oh, I got to get up early or I have more sessions. But that was just who they are. There's always people that are like that. And there always will be. And to understand and look at that and be like, okay, I can judge myself from yesterday, learn from it, make conclusions and then decide to create a better path for me. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's like accepting the yin and the yang accepting, um, you know, cause, cause where it starts is that single layer. Like, first of all, no one knows where a thought is born from, but, or where, or where consciousness exists in the body, but that thought is born, whatever it may be. And we can either run from it and what we resist persists, or we can address it and work through it and either, Either recognize like, okay, that's just the same thought I always have. 80% of the thoughts we have today are the same ones we had yesterday. Okay, this is just that that self-deprecating channel, right? We can get into the habits and meditation is a beautiful tool um, to separate ourselves from these thoughts to action and be able to kind of slow down time in a way and, and redirect our behaviors and actions um, to our goals. And rather than just being flopped around like loose, uh, loose spaghetti by our whimsical um, fears and doubts, we actually can start to um, kind of malleable move them in the direction that we want to head with our actions and self. So yeah, you do have to kind of take the good and the bad. It's not just all one sided, but but you can either run from it or you can address it and go through it. And I think that's kind of the fork in the road, right? People see an obstacle and they either run a completely different direction or they say, all right, this is my Everest today and I'm going to try to tackle this. Um, and, and when you do that, you start to remove obstacles out of your ability to live in that flow state. Um, you know, another thing that I wanted to just show here, um, is something else that, that I saw on social media. And I think this would help people, um, kind of get an idea to, um, to, to hear this, but I, I just briefly want to say that, um, when I, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis about, um, yeah, 11 years ago, uh, 2012, about this month, actually. And at the time I would have never said, Oh, this is a gift. I love this thing. Absolutely not. Fuck that. It, it made me, here I am, this person who was 120 pounds soaking wet, um, coming up from high school to college. I had crippling, uh, social anxiety. I, I felt really low about myself because I was just basically skin and bones. No one really took me seriously. I never had girls even look at me really. Like I didn't have that many friends. I felt really low about myself and I did invest myself in the gym because I wanted to build strength. I wanted to build confidence. So I, I started to eat five meals a day and work out five days a week. And, and I did that for probably six years, seven years before I ended up in the hospital diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. And I went from 160 pounds back down to like 120 pounds. I was at 160. I was already at a 10% body fat or less. So you can imagine all I lost was a muscle. All I lost was all that hard work I'd put in for over those years. And, and I just looked like emaciated and, and depleted. And it was really, it was really frustrating that I've gone through that period probably like three or four times, but I can look back now and say, it's a gift. It's always been a gift. It was this 
piece that I needed so that I got out of this habit of, oh, I can lift all, all week long so I can eat whatever I want on the weekends. It's this piece that, that stimulated me in the direction to learn about inflammation and longevity and diet and the brain and anxiety and depression and anger. And it allowed me to, it revealed me to myself and allowed me to attack all these effort Everest in my life at different points. And I can look at it as a gift because it's allowed me a platform to, to, of experience to help impart wisdom and help kind of poke and prod others in different directions to help them find their fitness freedom. Um, but Oh, I really I want you guys to listen to this really quick. Let me know. Um, Eric, give me a thumbs up if you can hear this. Oh. No. Nope. I have everything. For me, like peace is just flow state. So I have everything. Like I can do whatever the fuck I want. The only desires I have is when I don't desire anything. So going to be able to do whatever you want isn't really truly free. Freedom is flow state right here. Like there's some stuff trying to creep in the back of my head during this podcast, but it's kind of blocked because I'm thinking about the viewers, I'm thinking about you, I'm thinking about everything but me. Humans are supposed to go from flow state to flow state to flow state all day. The definition of inner peace is what flow state is, not knowing time as it passes by. So the only thing I know as enjoyment in life is not enjoying anything and just not noticing time as it passes by. So I'm enjoying this because I'm not noticing life in the, in the constructs of our sensory world. So as the sensory world drops, like the spiritual world comes about, and now you realize your power. And I mean, I just found like my true strength a long time ago within is when I really realized that I did not belong in the same world as everyone else did. So I had solutions that came from somewhere else that the world needed. For me, like peace is... For me, and and, like and peace. one other thing to couple with that... Flow is more about... Remember Adam? Removing those oh yeah. ...than it is about forcing it. Than it already does. But what we can do is we can remove the obstacles that are in its path. We can dig a better trench to make it flow better. We can take out those branches or we can remove them. But remember, a lot of us do the exact opposite. We try to force our will or or you know just use sheer willpower to force our flow. That doesn't work. And I just – sometimes I can't always articulate things the best, um, and sometimes I, I just watch something and it articulates exactly what I've been trying to say or write down or draft. So, um, yeah, that was – first one by, was by Wes Watson, who um, has this whole fitness concept um, based on his experiences of being in jail. And someone who's been in jail for 10, 15, 20 years um, – is is someone who has really looked at themselves a lot and, and i think what he's talking about is like it came from this other place is it, it came from this this worldly perspective within him that he had and kind of that intuition um and instincts that have driven him and how mu much of us how many of us no longer can really tap into our true instincts or our um yeah, instincts is the good word. How many of us are, are kind of blinded and, and still unaware of like what's our instincts and what's stimulated by society or by our fears or our, our judgments of ourselves? And it's it's hard, but when you can remove those obstacles like Adam's talking about, which we've had on our podcast previously, um, you know, you, we remove those obstacles, then you can enter those flow states and you can learn and start to gravitate towards what is what is resonating with your soul. Um, and that's how you find that inner guidance and that, that inner peace in the end of the day and, and find fitness freedom through your uh, routine and, and the process back to what we were talking about. So one more promo code here, and then I want to address um, – I'll give Eric some time to talk and look at some of the comments here. But it's Squat Weekly, S-Q-U-A-T-W-E. E K L Y. That's the fourth promo code today. Go ahead and enter that into the contest page in the link. And we have one left. And it goes to the same with you, not even fitness, just in, in any day life is removing those obstacles to, to become just a better person in that version of yourself that you ultimately want to be. And nowadays with this world that is still just being created and you know i really don't know but in my opinion it's almost like people are creating these altered reality of this ai to almost escape the hardships of this real world and 
everyone wants to you know have a voice or be included in things and, and in reality that's not really the case um you know it, you will be at some points but if you look at life you know thousands of years ago that just it wasn't how it was and i just kind of finished reading a book and it explained kind of how you know how we kind of came to be as a, a superior race and how we kind of dominated throughout you know the history of the world is to it sapiens be, mm -hmm. sorry was it sapiens no it was it was born to run but oh. kind of the, the premise of of how we kind of became you know we weren't the we weren't the toughest of species we weren't but we had this brain that was ultimately the brightest and how to survive and kind of all we always thought it'd be we're we need to survive this world and that's the ultimate goal and, and we've made it so easy to survive this world but we're also now decreasing our lifespan because people have just made things super easy and we're so complacent mm. in this world and a lot of people are losing sight of you know their spirituality their inner selves their intrinsic being because everything's so automated everything in this world is automated and you're losing sense of who you are and one of the best things and, and we love to do is just going on walks in nature or kind of going into these realms of hey i'm gonna go do something hard like a hard run or a hard workout yeah it's tough but it gives you different perspectives of life and to understand what kind of people go through and i think a lot of these people on social media that have gone through these hard things that's what they're preaching like everyone needs to do tough things in life and find adversity and fight to understand your full potential and where you kind of like lie in the spectrum of the world and it's not always going to e be easy there are always going to be people that want to put you down that want to beat you and be better than you and i think that's kind of for me one of the driving factors of what why i like to do what i like to do because i know there's people that don't like me there's people that do like me but the people that don't like me for what i do is kind of the factor what drives me more to be like i need to be better and better so i can help more people but who cares of other people's opinions really at one point i did let that bother me and it gets someone nowhere so if that's something where people really are struggling with take those things out of your world take off self automation out of your world take social media out of your world take that thing out and see how you go and then recreate your world and then you can add it back in and you'll know okay well if someone comments i really don't care because i'm happy with where i am in with myself and where i want to be and that's that's the ultimate goal right is your your self tribe your family your friends because at the end of the day they're really the only ones that really care about you deeply on a scale of hey if i i'm going to battle or you know, I need help. You know, I know if I call Matt, he's going to be like, hey, what do you need? It's so vice versa. Like, and that's how true friendships and relationships are built. And it's an inner circle that will always be there. And that social network is what's going to keep someone going. And I think that speaks to the concept behind Think Fitness Life was nothing can harm you more than your own mind untrained. And nothing can come for you better than your own mind trained. Um, so it was it was kind of the driving force at wanting to teach people to navigate um, the pitfalls of their mind and learn how to make their mind their their greatest tool, their greatest asset. Because back to you know what, what you were saying about born to run, yeah, I mean we we have this ability unique to us than than other animals where we can go to that highest level of thinking and change the way we think. <laughs> Look at that cat. Mm -hmm. um, and not every creature can do that. Um, not every creature needs to do that either. You know, look at, look at a dog. A, a dog is so happy um, relentlessly. It's the only, only creature I know that you can go to get your mail and come back and they treat you like you've been gone for a month. Um, you know, put your, put your best friend in the trunk of your car and your dog in the trunk of your car and drive around the block, open the trunk and which one's going to be happy to see you. I'm just, I'm kidding. That's a dog <laughs> joke though. That's just a silly dog joke, but the, the concept still applies of um, coming back to what I was saying. It's just being able to um, click save on some of the maladaptive ones that you have and examine into them and pick them apart and I think the best analogy here is just is R A I N rain. Think of like rain falling and thoughts coming, and you, you let 
some some stick into you and they hold on to you, but you have to let it fall and flow off you like water. So you recognize, you allow it in, you recognize some something doesn't feel good, you allow the thought in, you investigate into it. Is there is it because I haven't worked out in a week? Is it because I'm really not taking care of my health? Um, then you separate yourself from it, right? Like like for me, anger had such a chokehold on me and that was so linked to my colitis. Um, and, and my response with my digestive system that I had to, to go from this concept of I am anger or I am angry. How often do you hear yourself say that? I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. You're not the emotion anger. You're just experiencing it and it's part of the human experience. So when you can go, when you can separate yourself from that, you go to this worldly place and you can start to navigate and redirect things in the direction you want to go you know that anger can lead to more anger um, more inflammation chronic inflammation repetitive cell damage repetitive cell damage can cause um, mutations can lead to precancer and cancer or you can cor- try to correct that and navigate that and use that stimulus of that anger to make change because there's probably something you can control and you know it it, it is crazy but you have 30 trillion cells on your body. So you're trying to get everything in synchronization. You know, we talk about this concept of synergy. One plus one equals three. I'm trying to get all of my systems and all my cells to be in a state that a country is in when they're in total war, when everything's working towards one end goal. Um, that, that harmony is just a beautiful thing. And then you can get to that synergy where you're performing better together than the sum of their separate parts. And now you've unleashed your body's ability to clean out inflammation properly, you know, to handle the stresses and loads, but to be able to bounce back from them. You know, the classic line is it isn't how hard you can hit. It's how hard you can get hit and keep going. You know, I, I we deal with a lot of people who just want to get out of pain. They have arthritis uh, or some type of, itis which is just inflammation of the so they're building up inflammation in their knees or their hips or their neck or their shoulder and their body isn't fast enough at cleaning out that inflammation or isn't even good at getting uh blood flow to that area for whatever reason uh, and they need to improve these processes so they're not just bailing the water out of the boat which might be the superficial thing to think right like i just want to get out of pain whatever you need to do to get me out of pain sure cut me open doc and get me out of pain today well, this is going to lead me to years of pain down the road because I didn't realize that I could have fixed this with rehab and the, and, the, and the surgery just solved the symptom, but it didn't solve the underlying problem overall, which is the neuromuscular patterning or the lack of mobility or my poor fascia, which is creating poor blood flow or that can't cycle waste out and more nutrients to that area. So you you got you to gotta be able to be back to the beginning of this conversation was take your short-term goals but attach it to your long-term purpose. And then within there, you'll find the processes that you need to adopt in order to get you there for your, for the best, the life that you want to live today and the life that you want to invest in for tomorrow. And I think that's why I always like to have programs that are written at least 12 weeks, right? So you understand that, Hey, this is going to be a process because we've all read those magazines are like, Oh, you get on this program 30 days, which I'm sure there's good 30 day programs. But that's such a short amount of time. If you have something that's like long term, hey, I have 12, 14, 16 week program. It's just trusting that process and knowing that it's going to take you into that realm or that position that's going to create that change for you. And we all know that that creating adaptation or change takes time. It takes months to see that change and to create that change. And the, the, sometimes the longer it takes, like school. Like learning through school, you go through years of school education, you, you're taught to like the hard work of it and you appreciate that a lot more. And then it resonates with people, find flow states, they were, they'll be more likely to attain and keep on those goals. Because everyone likes to have a short term thing. Because if you do something without like a competition or anything, it can get tough. Um, it can be done. But like a weightlifting, I don't know if you're doing a competition, but I had a, a friend that just did a powerlifting competition and he was in 20 weeks of training. And now he's on another short-term goal of running to allow him to have that goal. Hey, this is where it's going to take me. Now, some people don't need that. And other people can be like, hey, I'm just going to create programs because their motivation is different intrinsically. So wherever someone is, we can meet them with our programs and our services. That's what we do here at Think Fitness Life. 
and um and yeah just to highlight what eric is saying yeah like 30 days is too short of a sample size to get real concrete data to make erratic changes you can make adjustments but not erratic changes up and down um you know and and even in the day i see so many people who try something for the first time and like oh i can't do that okay we're gonna try to regress the movement and we're gonna try it again and if we can't do it we we're gonna call it today but we're not gonna give up on trying to do this another day and i think that's something to keep in mind as well so last promo code today, we're running up on the hour mark here, is Hinge Weekly, H-I-N-G-E-W-E-E-K-L-Y. And um, just to kind of piggyback on what Eric's saying, yeah, what we've been doing is programming for exercise and nutrition for people remotely, because that's what we've been doing for 10 years in person with people. All of our programs have been backed by science, by, by, by case studies have been implemented on either ourselves or ourselves or our clients. Four weeks is good enough to start, but that's like the heavy fog analogy. You just drove that first 50 meters after that first 30 days. Now you see the next 50 meters and now it's okay to make another little minor adjustment and keep building on that, that first piece that drove you to that first 30 days. Um, but what we haven't really announced yet, um, we've talked about it here and there. It's not fully done yet, but we're gonna be working with an app, having everything um, on one area right on your phone so you can access your programs, access your nutrition platform or your uh, nutrition plan, and then have a chat right to us so that we can coach you guys along the way. Because I think that's the thing that people miss out on is you shouldn't just have to have a trainer like one time a month or once a week they really should try to be with you every day because you can't always read the label when you're in the jar. So it's nice to have someone to bounce things off of. Um, and it can be a little bit like feeling like you're, you're, you're blind trying to walk and feel things out and it can be helped. It can be helpful to have some guidance. So we'll be getting that system up and running soon. So we can be as effective as we can while delivering affordable coaching and programming to as many people as we can. Um, that being said, we'll give a short moment here for anyone who wants to ask any questions and I'm out of water. Looks like nothing's popping through on the chat here. That's totally fine. That's right. All right. Well, thank you for watching and have a great weekend. Have a great week and we'll see you Wednesday.